Is intermittent fasting good for you? A lot of people have heard about some benefits, they've heard about some drawback, they wonder is this natural, is it doable? Well, there's a lot of different aspects to it, but today we're going to give you 36 benefits of why intermittent fasting may be good for you. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Ekberg. I am a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. So first of all, what is intermittent fasting? Well, fasting is when you don't eat. So eating is when you put something in your mouth and swallow and fasting is when you take a break from doing that. Intermittent fasting is just talking about different periods of fasting. How do you structure it? How long do you go without fasting, etc.? So when we're talking about this today, we're not making any distinction between different kinds of fasting. So there's things like 16-8 uh, patterns, there is OMAD, one meal a day, there's 5-2, eat normal five days, change it up uh, two days, alternating days, eat normal one day and, and fast or almost fast one day. Or you can also do extended fast, which means you're going 36 hours or longer with nothing but water. So we're not going to talk about the different types today, but just know that the principle of fasting, of not eating, allows some physiological changes and we're going to talk about the benefits of those changes. If you have any or several of these issues, then chances are it's a really good idea for you. But if you are underweight, if you're undernourished, if you're malnourished, if you are growing, such as a child, or if you're pregnant, then those are times when it's not a good idea to do a fast because you have different nutrient requirements. So please keep that in mind and also if you are on any form of medication such as a type 2 or a type 1 diabetic then make sure that you talk to your doctor about what's going to happen so that they can monitor and help you regulate your medication better because if you start fasting and you don't introduce any new sugar into your body, then you are over medicated and you run the risk of hypoglycemia. So the first benefit is that when you don't eat, you reduce blood glucose. Anytime you eat something, it has to be digested and at some point enter the bloodstream and raise blood sugar. So if you're having high blood sugar, then fasting allows that blood sugar to drop. When the blood sugar drops, there is less or no need for insulin to be released. So along with drop blood sugar goes less insulin. And if you have high insulin a lot, if you eat a lot of sugar over a long period of time and you trigger a lot of insulin over a long period of time, you get insulin resistance. So fasting helps reverse insulin resistance. And as a result of reversing insulin resistance, we also reverse some of the things that are directly associated with insulin resistance. Number four, fasting allows you to lose weight. And that's sort of self-explanatory. If you don't eat, you lose weight. But more importantly, it allows you to lose weight and keep it off because 99% of diets fail because they don't address insulin resistance. If you restrict calories and you manage to lose some weight, but you're still insulin resistant, the weight will come back because you haven't changed your set point. So what fasting allows you to do is to lose the weight and reduce insulin resistance, and then your basic metabolic rate stays up. Number five, it allows you not just to lose weight, but to lose fat and to lose the fat in the place where it matters most. Because the fat that's gained around the midsection, that's the dangerous one. That's the one associated with insulin resistance. It's called abdominal fat and it is associated with all the problems associated with insulin resistance. So by fasting, you drop insulin and you allow yourself to lose the bad fat, the dangerous fat. 
it helps reverse syndrome X, metabolic syndrome. And in doing that, uh, metabolic syndrome is associated with insulin resistance and associated with metabolic syndrome are things like cholesterol, so you can help lower cholesterol, you can help lower triglycerides, you can help lower blood pressure, you can help lower inflammation, and in doing those things you also reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, myocardial infarctions, and you reduce the risk of stroke. So I think so far we've covered a, a good amount of good reasons because these are all the top killers of mankind, especially in the Western world, but pretty much in the entire world these days. And of course, part of all of this metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance, the end stage or the, the severe stage of insulin resistance is type 2 diabetes. So fasting is one of the most powerful ways to reduce type 2 diabetes. And in doing that, we also reduce the risk of getting blind because type 2 diabetes is the number one cause of blindness. It is the number one cause of kidney failure. It is the number one cause of amputations. So people who are on dialysis for kidney failure, that's usually a result of type 2 diabetes. People who start getting their toes and their feet and their legs and their fingers amputated, that's a side effect, a consequence primarily of type 2 diabetes. So we're reducing the risk of all of those. 17. Autophagy. Self-eating. Fasting induces self-eating or autophagy. And what that means is the body gets really good at recycling. All the stuff that you don't want in your body, the body gets much, much better at recycling. It starts eating the stuff that you don't want in the body. When you eat all the time, the body doesn't have to be so specific. It doesn't have to be so meticulous in paying attention to every little scrap and morsel that you eat. But when you don't eat, the body has to get much, much better at preserving the resources. So now it gets much better at recycling the debris. So cells that break down and die, it gets really good at using all those materials and it gets much better at going after those cells that need cleaning up, such as cancer cells and things that create problems in the body. So number 18, reduced cancer, is a result of that autophagy. And some of the things that also helps clean up are pathogens. So uh, it's not on the list, but another benefit is actually improved immune function. 19, autophagy is associated with longevity. Just like they've done studies on calorie restriction and found that animals and people live longer, uh, autophagy is a very powerful way to create the same effect. It extends lifespan. Autophagy and fasting also produces, it's one of the most powerful ways to produce two hormones called human growth hormone and BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. And both of these are also associated with the longevity. But the really cool part about these two hormones is that they are necessary to make synapses. And what does that mean? Your brain has a hundred billion brain cells and each one of those brain cells makes on average five to ten thousand connections or synapses with other cells. So those complicated connections are called neural networks and it is how your body sends signals, it's how your body learns things, it's how your body remembers things. And the more BDNF and the more growth hormone that you have, the easier it is for the body to make synapses and new connections. So in other words, you get better at learning. And they found that fasting and high intensity interval training and things that improve growth hormone and brain derived neurotrophic factor can even build new brain cells. Even 15, 20 years ago, they didn't think that was possible but now they know that you can make new brain cells, but it depends on these two hormones. 
Some more hormonal benefits are number 22 and 23. You improve your leptin sensitivity and you improve your ability to use ghrelin and respond to ghrelin appropriately. What does that mean? Leptin has to do with fat storage and fat utilization. So your body gets more sensitive and better able to tell when is it time to eat, what, what resources do we have in the body. And ghrelin also is related to hunger. So both of these help you regulate hunger and you, your body knows better when you are actually hungry and when you just have a craving. So one of the aspects of long-term weight loss is to teach the body what appropriate energy levels and appropriate hunger is. Number 24, fasting just like a ketogenic diet improves ketones, it creates ketones. In the keto diet we talk about reducing carbohydrates so low that the body has to burn fat and a side effect of that, a byproduct of that is ketone production. Well, when you fast, you're eating zero carbs. That's even less than the ketogenic diet. So the production of ketones is even more powerful. Part of that means that there are some brain benefits. And when the brain gets happier, when the brain starts running more on ketones than glucose, they have noticed benefits such as improved energy, improved mental clarity, improved concentration, and part brain benefit and part reduction in insulin and inflammation is that number 28, fasting also reduces the risk of Alzheimer's disease and dementia and associated neurodegenerative diseases. Number 29, now we're getting into something a lot of people don't talk much about because so much is on the focus of, of blood sugar and so forth, but think about gut healing. Every time that you put something in your mouth and swallow, that means your digestive system has to go to work. And if you do that six times a day, then that's six times a day that your digestive tract has to go to work. That doesn't give it much chance to recover and heal and regenerate. So fasting is a powerful way to allow some gut healing. The gut the intestines, the membranes, the intestinal mucosa, all those sensitive tissues that have a really high turnover, finally they get a break and they have a chance to just regenerate and take care of themselves. As a result, you can reduce leaky gut, which means you can reduce allergies and food sensitivities. You can reduce autoimmunity because a lot of immune reactions is because of leaky gut. When, when you have leaky gut, particles that are too large to normally get through into the bloodstream, all of a sudden the, the gut is leaky and these large particles get through and now they become enemies, they become foreign invaders and your immune system sets out to attack and eliminate them. Autoimmunity can be a result of that. Number 32, pancreas regeneration. There's some exciting research that shows that the pancreas can regenerate as well. So part of that is because we're giving the digestive tract a break and the pancreas is a digestive organ. It makes both insulin and it makes digestive enzymes to break down the food. So because we're not eating, it gets a break from both of those activities. And it has been, there's some exciting new research that shows that there's some hope to regenerate pancreas tissue both in type 2 and type 1 diabetics. Number 33, now we're getting into a few more practical benefits that fasting is simple. It saves time. If you eat six times a day, that takes a lot of time, both food preparation and the time to chew and swallow. But when you're fasting, now all that time is freed up. Whether you eat once a day or twice a day, or if you're doing an extended fast, it means you're eating a whole lot fewer meals. You spend less time preparing, less time eating. So very, very convenient. Number 34, it can finally get rid of that sugar craving. 
So sugar is an addiction. It controls many people's lives. And something as simple as fasting can take care of that once and for all. Another aspect of sugar cravings is this fasting gives you more flexibility. So imagine that you can go out shopping, you can go out and do errands, you can go out in the yard and do some work without having to worry about planning in your meals. Okay? If you miss, miss a meal, if you have to go six or eight hours without eating, it's not a big deal. Your body knows what to do, you stay level-headed, and you still function and feel good. Number 35, it can save you money. So if you don't need to lose weight, then it's probably not going to save you that much money because you, you eat a little bit less during one period, you're probably going to eat a little more during another period. But if you are trying to lose weight, then think about the weight that you have on your body that you want to lose, whether it's 50 or 100 or 150 or 200 pounds, that represents probably thousands of dollars of food that if you fast and you start using that stored, that bank account sitting on your body, then you could save thousands of dollars in the process of getting rid of the weight. And number 36 is that fasting can be very, very powerful. It can be that last resort for the person who have tried everything else and they're just not getting the results. Whether what they're trying to improve is brain fog or whether it's mental clarity or whether it is an autoimmune disease or whether it's an ache or a pain, who knows? That a lot of times they're stuck because their body has not been able to go through all these benefits of autophagy and insulin resistance reduction and so forth. And a lot of people, as, as many people as have had success on the low carb, high fat or keto diet, some people do that and it still doesn't work. They still don't lose weight, they still don't get any, any health benefits because their bodies are so insulin resistant that cutting the carbs is not enough. You have to cut the carbs by taking them to zero and fast for an extended period of time. And for some people, a 16-8 is not long enough. A 16-hour fasting window is not long enough for the body to open up the, the fat vault. They might have to go to OMAD or even 36 or, or longer fast than that. So it can be very, very powerful. It can be the thing that finally crosses the threshold, that finally unlocks the body into moving toward, toward a, a healing solution. And remember that fasting can be very, very powerful, but it can also be a little bit dangerous for the wrong person at the wrong time. So before you get into any extended fasting, make sure that you learn enough that you can do it safely. Do it under the supervision of a doctor who knows what they're talking about if you're going to do any extended fasts and especially if you are on some kind of medication, especially like a type 1 diabetic because if you start fasting then you are over medicating your insulin or if you're on metformin or something else and you start fasting then you are over medicating because you're not putting any more sugar into the system so now there's a chance of hypoglycemia and some stuff like that. But a 16-8 should be perfectly safe for everybody. So start playing around with it, watch lots of videos, read up on this and get really smart, talk to your doctor and then you can do this safely and reap some of these benefits. If you're new to the channel and you enjoy this sort of information, make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss anything. And also share this with as many people as you can because there's a lot of people suffering. There's a lot of people with insulin resistance. There's a lot of people with any and all of these conditions that we've talked about. And fasting and more good health information could be just the thing that they need. So if you care about them, share this so they can get better too. Thanks for watching.